Hey everybody, this is Joseph J. McAllister and I thought I'd show you around my $170 DIY film set. So you can see this is the basic layout. And as you can see, those are the rafters where I store everything. It's really just a garage, but actually works perfectly. Hopefully you can't tell that there's all kinds of lines and grooves through the wall. But if you get up real close like this, you can see where all the flats come together. Uh, there's quite a groove in this one. Um, technically, I should take and putty that in and then paint over it and make it completely smooth. Uh, so putty, sand, and paint. But as you can see, most of them are, are pretty good. They're not that bad and obvious. So. I think I'll work around them, mainly shoot from a distance, um, avoid shots that highlight that, and use a shallow depth of field when I can to just kind of blur that out. Now the boards that I went with are one and a half by two and a half, and they're actually pretty thick, sturdy boards, thicker than most people use. But the thing about these boards is, when they are sturdy, uh, they make the whole construction a little bit heavier. But the good thing about them is that they're pretty cheap when you go to Lowe's. They're like eight foot and they're $2.18 right now a piece. Now as you can see, I tacked on these extra boards, just screwed them in. They're kind of floating up right there. Uh, but I tacked on these extra boards to straighten out the set because it wasn't quite straight at the joints. It wanted to be kind of bent out or bent in all around it. So these really straightened it out um, very easily and you can easily just unscrew them again. Now right here, you can see that um, I actually just drilled a hole in this and put like three inch screws all the way through here. And I just put one there, one up there, and then just one or two down there depending on if there was sort of a gap then I would kind of squeeze it together. Plus when I was putting the set together I actually used clamps. I would use some quick clamps but then I would use a strong C clamp as well to really tighten this down and for the most part get these really close together. As you can see on the other side that's how I got these really tight seams where the different flats came together. One problem with these is once you're done with all the flats and you go to put them together, they're not really straight and perfect. Um, but by using that C clamp and really straightening them out and using this board, you can really straighten them out so that they're going to line up perfectly just by forcing them to. And eventually they take on a straighter shape by being stuck in that position for, you know, several weeks or a month that they might be up. And considering that they sort of fit together best in a certain way, it's good to just go around and number every single one of these. Although, you know, you might want to move the door to a different part of the set, and you might want to move these, these smaller ones that are two and a half to somewhere else, or turn them into windows, um, and then move them to somewhere else. But um, when you do that, you'll just have to pull out the C-clamp and really clamp them down again. Now, as far as the paint's concerned, I just brushed this on. Everything was just brushed on, a uh, double coat. What I really should have used is not an oil-based paint. I used oil-based paint and it takes a long time to dry and there's gonna be a lot of fumes in here for, it's been a week now and it's still a little bit bad. Um, it was to be a week before the fumes are really gone. Uh, if I had used water-based paint, the fumes would probably already be gone from here within one week. Uh, another thing is I just put it straight onto the wood and if you don't use primer, it might peel off eventually. Uh, I'm not too worried about it. It seems to be doing a good job for me. Um, it's not like a permanent thing. I'll probably paint these like 20 different colors eventually as I reuse the sets over and over. But yeah, the, the best stuff that you can use is a coat of primer and then follow that up with a couple coats of water-based paint. All of the 2x4s you see on the back are actually left over from Halloween. Um, this door, uh, the only part that was left over was the latches and all that stuff, so it was pretty easy to just throw together in that door. So here's the latch right here and the door handle. 
And um, here's some latches that I use to hold the door on and they work out really well. Now this uh, glass you see on here is actually an, a sheet of acrylic which is only like 10 bucks at those. So it's really easy and what I did is I actually used the bandsaw to cut that and you have to go really slow and it, it puts a lot of plastic chips all over the place that you need to clean up afterwards. And then as far as attaching it, since the back I'm not really trying to do anything special with it, I just used some white silicone and just pasted it on there and it's on there really good now. It's not going anywhere. And this is the basic support structure that's on the back of it. For this, I used actually really light wood. It's about a two and a half by half inch, and it's like 99 cent wood at Lowe's um, because I want the door to be good and light as well as sturdy. So it works out great. Now this light right here, I actually just went to Lowe's and bought this little light for I think it was about 20 bucks and right here all that's holding it on is just this piece of wood and then I've got my electrical wired together also this little picture on here it's a really light little painting so for something like that all I did is just attach it and put a, a thick 14 gauge wire through there and then just twist tied it in the back right there and that's all that's holding that on you know there's the light and there's the picture right there now this charcoal portrait has glass on it and it's actually pretty good size and heavy and I certainly don't want it to drop, it's an actual antique. So for something like that, I actually put in an actual cross beam across here to really hold it on tight and drilled it in. And uh, various different decorations hanging up here in our charcoal portrait. And on the back, again, I just put a vertical cross beam for the charcoal portrait. Back here, this little painting is just hanging by this piece of wood, all precarious really, but it's not going anywhere. Now this set extension curtain right here is extending the 8 foot set into a 16 foot set. And as you can see right up there, it's really just hung up kind of like a shower curtain on this little rod right here. And this hanging light, um, rather than spend extra money on a hanging light fixture, I just decided to take one of these uh, clamp lights and pull the clamp off of it and then just make it look like a hanging light. And uh, I made these dark boxes right here for developing, for developing wet plates and this is a flash lamp tray I made and I made this desk right here. And uh, me and a friend of mine, Ron Sharp, we also made this coffin one day. Now also I wanted to show you real quick on the bottom of the chairs and these little tables and things. I put these little stick'em felt pads from Walmart on the bottoms of everything. They're on the bottom of this table, on the bottom of that coffin, uh, they're on the bottom of that table, and um, that little developing box over there and that one up there both have them. So basically the idea is that I don't want this uh, lamel wood scratched up um, because that would kind of ruin the set there. So I just put those little pads all over everything and now you could just pull it around like that and it's not going to mess anything up. So as far as the floor is concerned you can see I'm using 4x8 laminated wood. And I don't really know if this was meant to be walls or if it was meant to be flooring, but it's working out pretty good. It looks like a floor. And you can see uh, it's got a real cool wood texture to it. Now, because I don't own a truck and I just actually have a Kia Rio, which is really good for hauling like eight and 10 foot poles and stuff, uh, two by fours but it's really hard to haul something that's like a four by eight foot wood sheet um, because it's, it's just not gonna fit into the car. So what I do, as you can see a little better here, is I have everything cut into 32 inch sheets so I can stack them up in my car. Also, throwing down a little roll up carpet really is uh, helping to sell this as an actual floor right here. Now as far as lighting, 
something that I noticed that was really important for lighting this set is that all of these bulbs had to be the exact same color temperature. Like everything from up here to um, back behind that door, everything is the same color temperature. I don't have any blue daylight bulbs in there. And the other thing is they, they all have to be the exact same bulb. Um, obviously not this one, it's just more of a decoration, the Edison bulb. But um, to get even lighting throughout the set, like all of them have to be the exact same light bulb and put out the exact same amount of light. So uh, like if you're, you're dealing with uh, 60 watt bulbs and you want them all to be the exact same 60 watt bulb. Otherwise you're going to end up with hot spots in your set and different colors of of light in different places and it'll just look weird. Now one thing that's cool is I went down to Home Depot and I bought a tabletop dimmer switch and so you can just kind of switch it like that or switch it all the way off and it's got a back on it so you're not getting electrocuted. As you can see the lights up in the ceiling are being controlled by that. Now up here in the rafters I'm using PAR 38 clamp floodlights. So you could buy two of these for like 10 bucks at Walmart and they're the PAR 38 halogen floodlights. And so basically this is what they look like. Now the one thing about these PAR 38s is they're a really really bright light and they're actually going to be too bright for your set and that's why I'm using this dimmer right here. And they're dimmed immensely. All right, so let's take a look real quick behind this set and look at some of the wiring. Now this is like my typical Halloween wiring. I just uh, staple some 14 gauge wire on there and cut it and then just kind of use it like a twist tie to keep everything in place. And one thing I want to keep everything up off the floor because when it rains sometimes uh, some of the water creeps in through the door and gets onto the floor in here. So you can see here's some of the wiring coming up and there's that light again right there. And lighting up the back of this door, I just put a clamp light and clamped it to the back of the set. Now also these focus dummies are really invaluable to use if you have some. Uh, these I actually made for Halloween, but they're just so awesome for finding out like what the light's really going to look like when you're trying to film. And if you put a hat on there and then you'll see how much shade is going to be going over the eyes and things like that. And so you can truly see what kind of lighting you're going to end up with. And of course since they're adjustable this is lined up in the place where the chair is going to be. And also you can focus on it and then you can line your shot up and then you can go over and sit down if you don't have somebody here. So basically what I do is I just put the heads on top of light stands. I just cram it onto there and I just adjust it to my own height and start figuring out what my light and my focus is going to be. Alright, so pretty good for $170. Uh, it should work out really good and also one of the cool things about it is you can always tear it down and then put it back up and move the door around and create windows and also you can extend it sometime and make it even bigger if you want. Something else that's really cool about it is you can always paint it all kinds of different colors and make different sets out of it or even go down to Michael's and grab a few yards of fabric that has patterns on it and then stretch it over the walls and staple it and create kind of like a wallpaper kind of look. So alright I hope everybody enjoyed my DIY film set project and let me know uh, if you have some uh, film set projects of your own and don't forget to like share and subscribe. Mm -hmm.